Come on. Hey, guys. Happy Wealthy Wednesday. Uh, happy Wealthy Wednesday to everybody on Zoom as well. Uh, I'm excited to be here today. Uh, Sabina and I have an amazing training on to really, guys, give you guys, equip you guys, right? Guys, there's 52 days left Ooh. until 2022. Like, that's crazy. And you know what's more crazier is that from those 52 days, guys, there's only five family days, all right? We're entrepreneurs, all right? So it's Thanksgiving, it's uh, Christmas Eve, right, for us Latinos, the 25th, right, the day of Christmas, and then the 31st, again, for us Latinos, and then the first, right, which is uh, uh, New Year's Day, right? So 52 days and only five days, guys, that you need to put time aside for your family, right? So don't get lost in the sauce as far as like, oh, my God, is the holidays coming, right? What do I need to do? Christmas shopping. You don't need to do that right now, right? You need to work your business, guys, uh, right now. We have incentives in the company uh, or in the 3000 office where you can go division this month, you can go regional this yeah. month. So yeah. don't get lost, right? Like, don't forget about what, what has been happening just because of the holidays. We're always going to have a Thanksgiving. We're always going to have a Christmas, right? But the question is, what type of Christmas you're trying to have, right? Are you going to be the Santa in your family? Or, you know, is I mean, who's going to get the gifts, right? Yeah. So you can't get the gifts, guys, if you don't have the money. So let's be real and, and you know, increase your contract, right? Why not go RVP by the end of the year, right? Why not end as a regional? How long have you been a division? Are you a division now, right? Why are you not a division now? So, guys, let's get serious. I'm telling you today we're going to have an amazing training, um, really going over the napkin presentation, right? Because, yes, we have Zoom, but there's no excuses. You can literally meet with somebody on a coffee shop and catch a bag. Like, seriously, right? That's what I tell my team. You really have to equip yourself, guys, because Primerica, that's what it is. You know, yesterday I was doing a fast start and I had my 11 year old sitting right next to me, right? It was like around uh, 8.30 uh, in the evening. And I was doing a fast start. And after I'm done doing the fast start, y'all, um, she tells me, that's so easy. She's like, that's all you do? I was like, yeah, I got like a lot of chance. I got a lot of KTs, guys. And it's crazy because, I mean, she's 11 and she saw Primerica being so easy. And it's crazy to me that some of us, right, sometimes we don't even know how to do a fast start, right? We don't know how to do an IBA, uh, a KT. So, you know, it really got my attention how an 11-year-old being so naive, not knowing, obviously, you know, she knows what's right, what's wrong. But really just seeing that and saying, man, that's so easy. All you do is have to talk. <laughs> so, you know, food for thought, right, guys? Literally, this business, all you have to do is literally just talk, right? And we're going to give you the scripts. We're going to tell you what to do. So today's training, literally, have your notebooks out, uh, whether you're in the training room, whether you're on Zoom, have your notebooks ready because it's going to be an amazing training as far as, like, you can help a client today um, and make some money right? Where do you want to be by Thanksgiving, right? I mean, it's the 24th, right? So we're, we're what, what, I forgot what day, what, what day is today, right? Yeah. The 10th, right? So guys, like, plan out your day, plan out your month as far as like, okay, where am I going to be at, right? Uh, so guys, don't get lost in the south, right? I'm going to go ahead and bring Sabino up to kind of start the training and kind of go over the napkin presentation, guys. So let's go ahead and bring up Sabino. <laughs> How's everybody feeling? Unstoppable. Let's fire it up or what? Yeah, yeah. Hey, I got a rocket training for you guys this morning. Um, you know, we're going to go over napkin presentations this morning. Um, you know, how to how to overcome objections as far as, okay, client has questions. Uh, what do you do? You guys ever been there before when you're uh, in the middle of your presentation and you're like on a per, you know, particular slide and the client asks you a question, they're kind of like, I don't have a slide for that. You know, like how do I explain that? You know what I mean? So uh, the great thing about Zoom, or even if you have paper with you, if you're live with the client, you can take out a piece of paper, you can put up a whiteboard on Zoom and just write something and draw an illustration, draw something that explains uh, that concept you want your clients to understand, right? So the idea behind napkin presentations is you use it whenever your client has a particular objection to a certain topic that you're talking about, right? If they're asking about, you know, so what's a mutual fund or am I going to invest in Primerica? You know, what happens if Primerica goes down, right? Or, you know, if, if they ask about life insurance or et cetera, you know, they ask about uh, whole life insurance. I'm going to go over 
uh, three presentations, uh, well, two presentations as far as life insurance, and then I have two uh, recruiting NAVCA presentations that I think uh, some of you guys have seen before, and if you haven't, uh, so, you know, it's a little bit my secret sauce as far as recruiting. I have a, uh, a real estate model uh, NAVCA presentation that I want to share with you guys that you guys can use as far as just kind of summarizing Okay, this is Primerica, right? So I have two recruiting ones that are, are going to be very exciting for you guys to uh, to get this morning, right? So, but again, when it comes to objections, guys, if you're writing down notes, which I suggest you do, uh, you know, get your artistic pens out. We're going to do a little bit of drawing this morning, right? And if we have enough time, we might get some interaction from the crowd here uh, live from the office, right? But when it comes to objections, the first thing you have to understand is if your client is asking questions, that's a good thing, right? If your client is not asking questions, you should be worried, right? Because they're not interested, right? They're not, they're not concerned about what you're talking about. Because, you know, when I first got started, clients started asking me questions. I'm like, man, why are they asking all these questions? Like, can you just, like, listen to the presentation, right? And then I was like, no, like, they need to ask questions. So is your client asking questions throughout your presentation? And if they're not, Maybe you're not as engaging, am I right? You know, so maybe you're not as engaging. Maybe you're not asking them enough questions as well, right? So that's when it comes to just, you know, uh, talking to a client. And really, honestly, whenever you hear the word objection, uh, you might be like, oh, my God, that's scary, right? All an objection is, and we always talk about this, is a request for more information. That's what an objection is, a request for more information. How does this work? How does that work? Hey, I'm interested, but how does this kind of, you know, explain this again for me, right? That's all an objection is, right? Um, and then obviously when it comes to talking to your clients, uh, one of my favorite things that always helped me out is the saying that if you say it, they doubt it. And if they say it, it's true. You guys heard that before, right? So if you say it, they doubt it. But if they say it, it's true. It can be as simple as talking about life insurance. Let me give you an example, and then we'll jump into the napkin presentations, right? So I can talk to uh, uh, Carlos and Stephanie and say, hey, guys, you know, life insurance is very important. I think you guys need to get it. And you know why? Because you got kids, you got a house, and if something happens to you, Carlos, your wife's going to be devastating. I think you guys need to get life insurance. Do you want to get life insurance? Yeah. Right? That's me saying it. Right? <laughs> They're kind of like, man, whoa, what's wrong with you guys, right? You know, come down, right? Life insurance salesman, right? Or I can be like, hey, Carlos, have you, you know, have you guys actually heard about life insurance, Carlos and Stephanie? You guys heard about it before? Yes. Yeah? You know, you, you know, when it comes to life insurance, do you think it's important for families to have? Yeah. Yeah? Why? And they explain to me why it's important. And I say, yeah, exactly. That's very true. What happens when families don't have life insurance? What do they have to do now? And they tell me what happens when their family doesn't have life insurance, the, the GoFundMe's, the benefits that people do, right? And I say, hey, I agree. So when it comes to life insurance, who do you guys have it with right now? And they said they don't, they do. And that kind of opens up, opens, opens up the conversation as far as life insurance, right? So they're telling me it's important. They're telling me why it's important. They're telling me why or what happens if you don't have life insurance. What do we offer? Life insurance, right? So if they don't have it, they think it's important, they're, they're about to get life insurance with you, right? So just make sure to, to ask questions, and that's going to save your business, right? If you say it, they doubt it. And if they say it, it's true, right? So I'm going to jump into hopefully one of these 10 markers over here work. <laughs> if not, like one from my office, then this one should work. Um, if you don't mind getting me one from my office. Thanks, Lydia. Um, Okay, so the first one I'm going to go over is called the elevator story. Who's, ever, who's heard of the elevator story before, right? Uh, so the elevator story for me is whatever a client's asking, so how does, uh, so what am I going to invest in? Or whenever they ask me, like, what happens if, if Primerica goes down, right? So I kind of maybe stop sharing my screen, right? Share my whiteboard. And I'm going to write something for them, right? So the elevator story is very simple. So I put this on my presentation saying, Mr. Mr. Client, let me kind of show you uh, what I'm talking about as far as investing, okay? So let me kind of share with you 
uh, this simple illustration, right? So let's talk about uh, stocks for a second. You've heard of stock before, right? And uh, thanks to Christina and Jody for setting up. I think Christina's gonna be doing her artistic uh, things on her whiteboard, right? Okay. So, uh, so this is a stock over here. This is a mutual fund right here, okay? So let's keep it simple, okay? Mr. and Mrs. Klein, let's say you put a thousand dollars into the stock right here, okay? Uh, let's just call it ABC Company, okay? So you put $1,000 into this company, it's called ABC, okay? And if the company goes up in value, Mr. and Mrs. Klein, what happens to your money? Goes up. And they tell me, yeah, they, they interact with me. I want them to interact. I'm not just giving them information, right? I'm, I'm walking them through the information, right? So if the company goes up, what happens to your money? Goes up. It goes up, yeah, exactly. And, it, and if the company goes down? It goes down. It goes down, right? So, and what if the company goes out of business? Everything. And you out, right? You know, so use everything. It's kind of like kind of like gambling almost, right? Kind of like Vegas, right? Uh, that that kind of works with stocks. A lot of people invest in stocks, uh, but you know, whenever it comes to investing in stocks, is you're actively investing, right? Yeah. You, you actively have to be involved in your investments, right? Great for a lot of people, but also not great for everybody. Okay. Right. Now let's talk about a mutual fund for a second. Let's say you put the same thousand dollars into a mutual fund, right? So what's gonna happen is gonna put your money again in that ABC company. But what's gonna happen at the same time, what's gonna happen is you're gonna also have Amazon that you're investing, Walmart, Chevron, Shell, uh, I mean, you name it, they're probably in your portfolio. So now you're investing in over 100 to 300 companies. That's a, that's a mutual fund. It's a pool of companies that you're actually very familiar with and now your money's diversified with all these companies right here. Now, Mr. and Mrs. Client, if ABC company loses money here, like it did over there, does it affect your money here like it did over there as well? No, no it doesn't. Why not? Because you got, you know, you know, you're diversified amongst more company that's a small company or small percentage compared to your other companies yeah. that you're investing in right now let me wrap up with this right here imagine these are two elevators okay this just kind of bear with me right this elevator has one kind of let's call it a string hanging it up or holding it up this one has a bunch of them if you were to go to you know get your family to an elevator which one would you feel more safe the one on the right or the one on the left right the one on the right why is that Security. More security, you feel more more safe, right? That's a mutual fund for your family. It allows you to feel more safe and more secure as far as when it comes to investing. Yeah. You see how that works, Mr. and Mrs. Klein? So whenever it comes to investing with us, you're not investing in Primerica stock. We're helping you set up an account where your money's gonna be invested in a particular mutual fund, right? We got professionals, right? Got a guy named Jody, he's a great guy, right? You know, to it, right? Um, we got great professionals that can help you put together the best uh, strategy when you're in your family, right? So, so that's a mutual fund compared to investing into a stock. Any questions right there so far, Mr. And Mrs. Klein? And then, like, take my money, right? You know, so no, I'm just kidding, right? But, but that's called the elevator story. Very simple. Uh, and the thing about these napkin presentations, guys, that you want to master is the story yeah. part of it, yeah. right? right? You don't want to just start drying it out and say, hey, so which one do you like? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you want to kind of walk them through the story, get them engaged, right? So so that's the elevator story. Uh, any questions as far as anybody here in the crowd? Anybody good? Anybody want to come knock it out? Oh, okay. Y'all weren't ready for that, huh? Y'all weren't ready for that. Anybody want to knock it out? Okay, y'all good. Y'all good then, okay? I'm just kidding, right? Uh, hey, let's keep going. Let's keep it going because I do have some great other stuff I want to walk with you guys uh, as far as presentations, right? I was testing the guys in the office, right? People on Zoom, people on Zoom, they're ready. People on Zoom sharing the screen already, right? So, <laughs> you know, I'm with Daniel out there making moves, right? Um, Okay, so that's the elevator story, right? Again, uh, talking about investing. Now, let's jump into uh, 
whole life insurance for a second. Uh, our team's been running across a couple of whole life policies recently. Um, Janet, uh, we actually ran into a policy uh, a couple of weeks ago. Client was paying about $160 a month. Uh, we gave her more coverage for about half the cost. We invested the difference, right? So that was a, a great uh, client we helped out, right? Um, so what do you say whenever the client does ask you about uh, their policy? Or what happens when they give you the policy? What do you explain to them? So I use bank A, bank B, only when they have a policy, okay? Yeah. Um, I might go over it briefly if they are interested or have questions about whole life, but I don't go over it in detail unless they have a policy, That's good. right? So let me give you a scenario with, with the client we just met with, right? So I'm sure Jenny kind of gave them a run through as far as at the KT. We, we did a follow up with, their, with, with her policy and we explained it. Before I jumped into the presentation, you want to ask your client particular questions. Yeah. These are very important questions you want to ask them as far as why they got the policy. Okay, so we got to the client's home. If you're doing Zoom, that's great, but this is a, the, the policy uh, breakdown basically where you can use called bank A and bank B, right? So we got to the client's home and I asked them the first few questions as far as, hey, Mr. and Mrs. Client, you know, or this was Mrs. Client because it was just her, right? Uh, so Mrs. Client, uh, when you got this policy, what was the reason why you got this policy? Did you get the policy for the protection, for the savings, or for both, right? So that's a very important question you guys want to master whenever you do have clients that have policies. Hey, when you got the policy, Mr. and Mrs. Client, did you get it for the protection? Did you get it for the savings? Or did you get it for both, right? And if they got it for both or the savings, the bank A, bank B uh, NAFI presentation is perfect for that. So she said she got it for both, but she did say that it was sold as an investment to her as well. Mm -hmm. So she was interested in the investing. I know Victor, right? You know. So I said, okay, before we jump into your uh, uh, policy, let me show you something, Mr. Uh, Mrs. Client. Let me let you know. Let me show you something as far as uh, that's going to help us look into your policy. Okay. So let me give you a scenario. This is client, and let's say you're moving into a new part of the city, all right, especially Houston, we're in a big city, right? So let's say you move out to the Katy area, right? Let me go to Q scenario, right? So you move out to the Katy area, you're looking for a new bank, right? And you go to bank A, and then you go to bank B, and you ask them, hey, what can you, you, know, what can you guys offer me as far as benefits, okay? I'm going to go through this, guys, as I go through it with the client. So just pay attention to the questions I'm going to ask afterwards. That's the most important thing. That's the question after, okay? So, Mrs. Client, you go to Bank A, and they tell you, hey, Mrs. Client, so for the first few years, uh, one to five years, what's going to happen is your balance for the first few years is going to be at zero. So, so we're actually going to keep your money for the first few years. You won't have anything in your balance, okay? So that's the first thing we're gonna offer you, right? That's quite an offer, but that's what it is, right? Uh, number uh, Over here, I'm uh, sorry, uh, number one with Bank B, they're gonna say, hey, Mrs. Client, as soon as you deposit your money, that's gonna go straight into your account right away. That's the one right there, right? Uh, your money's gonna go into your account right away, so you have access to it whenever you need it, because that's your money, okay? You're like, okay, cool, cool. Let's, you know, let's go back to Bank A, right? Bank A tells you, hey, as far as your investment goes, you're gonna make a rate of return of anywhere from one to four percent. So your money is gonna grow at a one to four rate of return as far as uh, bank A. You're like, okay, well, let me go check out bank B, right? So bank B tells you, hey, your rate of return can be anywhere from eight to 12% in your investments with us. Okay, that sounds pretty good, right? <laughs> Let me give them one more shot over here, right? Let, you know, let's get going, right? They're gonna, you're gonna go back to Bank A. They're gonna tell you, hey, if you ever need your money from us, we're gonna let you borrow. We're gonna actually let you borrow your money, but we're gonna charge you uh, anywhere from a four to seven percent. So you want your money? Yeah, we're gonna charge you. Okay, you know. So that's Bank A, right? Bank B. 
uh, no charge as far as if you need your money, because that's, uh, again, your money, right? For, let's keep going here. Uh, if you were to pass away, the, the company or the bank can actually keep your money with bank A. So there's not really much of a beneficiary. You can lose that money. But over here, bank B tells you that your family gets the money if something happens to you, right? And the last one that they, that they tell you is that if you ever do need your money, they can keep, uh, they can make you wait up to six months if you ever need your money from your savings over here, right? So they can make you, so you got an emergency? Yeah, we're gonna make you wait, okay, All right? And then over here, there's no wait. There's your money right away, obviously. So, so this is where it gets important as far as the questions, trainers, right? So Mr. and Mrs. Klein, looking at these uh, the two banks, Bank A, Bank B, which one, which one looks the best for you and your family so far? And what do they say? B. Bank B. Why? And then they tell me why. Oh, because of the benefits, the rate of return. This one just looks horrible, whatever. I agree with you. It does look good. Okay. Now, what if, what if Mr. and Mrs. Klein, what if you had Bank B already? And what if I came to your home or I got on a Zoom with you? And what if I was trying to get you from, from Bank B to Bank A? What if I was trying to tell you to move over here? What what would you tell me? What would you call me? A scammer. A scammer, a con artist. You'd probably kick me out of your house, right? You probably call me crazy. Like, what's wrong with you, right? What would you offer me that to my family? Okay. Obviously, it doesn't make sense to switch, right? So now think about this. If somebody is a bank A, eh? Would there be any reason why they wouldn't want to switch? No reason. I mean, that's that's crazy talk. I mean, it makes sense to switch 1,000%, yeah. correct? Yeah. And they agree. And that's your close right there, guys. Because then, and because you agree with them, and you say, well, Mr. and Mrs. Client, the example I gave you, this is typically what happens in, in a lot of those cash value policies. They're all very different, but they all have very similar rules. If they don't have all five, they have three or four or two or three of them, but they have these, some of these rules in that cash value. Some have all of them. Yeah. I don't know what's in your policy. We're, we're about to look at it. But if your policy had some of these rules, what would you think about that for your family? Oh, I, I, I wouldn't be interested. I would, I would switch. I would cancel it, right? That's what they would tell me. Okay, well, now that you know what could be in there, let's dive into your policy. And we dove into that policy. We destroyed that policy with Janet, right? The client had, like, actually all the rules from what I remember. And, and what I love is we give them an educational approach to what we're about to explain to them in their policy. Does that make sense? So I'm not just telling them, I'm teaching them so they can make better decisions themselves. That's what we do in Primerica. We wanna educate families to make a better informed decision by the information we taught them. So by me teaching them this right here, and now I walk them through their policy, now they can make a better decision on their own. So it's not just me talking, it's we're, we're making a decision together almost. Does that make sense, you know? Yeah. Uh, and the daughter was there too, so she helped me you know, uh, explain it to the, to the family as well. She uh, had already taken her class as well, her insurance class. Uh, so that made it easier for us as well. But, but that's, that's bank A, and that's bank B for you guys, right? Uh, it always works best when they have a policy already. And if you're about to break down a policy, show them this first. Because you're about to go over that policy within like two minutes and you're about to show them the rules and their policy like in two minutes and you've never seen their policy. They're like amazed that you actually were able to find it and now you are the professional yeah. for that family, right? And that's a great feeling to, ha uh, to have with clients is that, hey, this guy is actually knows what they're doing. They know their stuff. They're, they're, they're confident and they're going to walk you through the whole process, right? So 
Uh, you guys good so far? Yep. Yeah. Bank A, bank B for you guys, right? So use that uh, this week with your clients. Uh, practice, uh, uh, you know, the presentation. You know, you know, they say perfect practice makes perfect, right? So keep practicing uh, your presentations, right? So I have two more uh, for you guys. We're gonna dive into recruiting, right? So uh, hopefully you guys learned a ton so far. So uh, if you're fired up, as I am, about these recruiting presentations, uh, hey, drop a seven seven in the chat box real quick and let us know how fired up you are about learning these right here, okay? All right, so the first one, I'm going to call it Business 101, all right? That's my napkin presentation, right? Uh, it's called Business 101, all right? And, and you guys have seen it. It's, it's typically explained during the bash start. Uh, so uh, I didn't make it up completely. I, I just, uh, I'm calling it Business 101 presentation, right? So, uh, but this is what you can use whenever you're recruiting somebody. And maybe you're having a hard time explaining the business. Like, hey, so where do you get your clients? Like, so what do I got to do? Like, so, so I, like, am I going to pass out flyers? Like, so how does this work? Okay. Let me show you something that I think can help you out, uh, Dylan. Okay. Let me, let me walk you through a, a simple example as far as business. Because the thing about business is a lot of business work very similar. Yeah. They're just offering different products or different services, right? Mm -hmm. So let's, let's walk through a, a quick example, Dylan. Um, let's say you're gonna start a restaurant, right? That's a business, right? So let's say you're gonna start this business, which is a restaurant. What's your favorite kind of food? Uh, Dylan, what do you like to eat? Uh, steaks. Steaks, my guy, right? Hey, there you go, right? So Dylan likes steaks, okay? So to get this business going, you have to have uh, X amount of uh, 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 components to start that business, right? So let's talk about that real quick, Dylan. So what do you need to start your business? Name a few things that you need. Let, you know, let's keep it simple. What do you need? You need the building. You need the building, yep. The location, great job. So let's go with location. What else? Uh, customers. Customers, clients, right? Yep, there you go. So let's put customers, right? Yep. What does he need? need uh, the permits. The permits. So you go licenses. Correct. Uh, I need the food and workers. Food, staff, workers, yeah. inventory, right? Forgot the last one right here. I'm going to give it to you as money, right? So you need money for that. Uh, you said inventory, right? Yeah. Which is like the food, the steaks. A little song to go like this, right? You know, so you need all that stuff, right? And you need uh, your staff, right? Your team. Right, Dylan? Yep. So to get your business going, and this example is a restaurant, you need a location, right? Where are you going to sell your steaks? They don't want to sell them. They don't want to buy them from your apartments, right? from your house, right? They want a nice place to sit down, right? So we got to find a location. You need licenses, regulation. Right to sell food, like you know, you can't just sell it because you want to, right? Yeah. You may have a team of staff. Like Dylan is, isn't going to be the owner and then cooking the steak, then serving the steak, and then sitting down people and then cleaning the dishes. He needs a team, right? He needs a staff, right? Inventory, we talked about that already. Customers, you need people to buy your food, eat your steaks, and obviously you need money as part of your investment. You see that? So let's say you have all this going for yourself, Dylan. It's your grand opening. Okay, your grand opening is coming up uh, next weekend. All right, Dylan. So now, with your grand opening coming up, who would you tell? Who be the first people you tell about your grand opening? Who would you invite? My friends and family. All your family, all your friends, right? You put it on social media. You're at H E B, walking around. Hey guys, come check out my restaurant down the street. Uh, you know, it's gonna be great. Come check it out. You're gonna go through your phone and you know go through all your contacts, right? And you're going to call people you haven't even talked to in a while. Hey, Johnny, I don't know who you are, but you're on my phone. Hey, come check out my restaurant. Bring your family too. Yes or no, Dylan? Yep. Yeah. I mean, how many contacts do you have on your phone? I mean, check 100, 200. He checks his phone. 300 contacts. There you go. That's your grand opening to your restaurant. At that grand opening, Dylan, would you want to have 10 people or over 100 people? 
Yeah, why? Because that's more money, more people get to eat the food. Now. More people, more exposure, uh, more people eat your food, right? And what's going to happen through that family and friends that you invite to your uh, restaurants at that grand opening, Dylan, what's going to happen is you're going you're gonna, to uh, benefit from that, right? The first thing that's going to happen is you just kind of just said it. Some of them are going to become your customers. They're going to like your food. Uh, hey, hey, dude, I love the steaks. I'm going to come back, all right? Uh, every time I have a birthday, I'm going to be here, right? Uh, and, you, you know, everything, special events, I'm going to come to your restaurant. Right? So, you're gonna, so now you got customers through your family and friends. Number two, your family will say, hey, I'm going to tell my friends about it. I'm going to post this on my social media. So you're going to get what? Referrals. <laughs> See how that works, Dylan? And then third of all, you're going to get potential staff. Some of your friends are going to walk in and say, hey, Dylan, are you hiring? I'm looking for work. I want to cook up some steaks. Or I'm looking for extra money. So through your initial family and friends, what's going to happen, Dylan, is you're going to get customers, right? Referrals and staff. And so is that a good, is that a great thing for you? It's a great thing. That's a great thing, right? And what's going to happen through your family and friends, and you're going to get customers or bros and staff, and it's going to give you more family and friends to come into your restaurant. And that's an endless cycle of referrals and family and friends talking about your restaurant. And you probably didn't have to spend any money in advertising just yet. It's all through referrals and word of mouth, right? So that's right, that, that right there, Dylan, that's if you were going to open a restaurant, a steakhouse, in this example, right? Yeah. But hey, we don't sell any steaks here, right? So that's not happening. What we're doing with Primerica, you're gonna start a financial services agency. And the great thing about it, you can start it part-time. That's the great thing about it, that you can do it part-time. But starting a Primerica business or starting a restaurant business, do you think it'll be different or have a lot of similarities? What would you say? Much the same. Pretty much the same thing, right? We're just not selling steaks. We're offering financial services. So you starting a restaurant business is kind of like starting a Primerica business. But here's the great, here's the best part about it all. If you were to go open your restaurant, you would probably be on your own most of the time. You would have to figure it out, find your logo, the, the steaks, the providers. You're going to have to hire your own people, pay your people, staff, payroll. Uh, that's a lot of cost, overhead, yes or no, right? Uh, money, I mean, how much money does it cost to get a location or buy a building or lease a building? You know, buy the food, pay your people. I mean, it, I mean, there's so much money involved, which is why not a lot of people are opening a steakhouse, right? But with your Primerica business, what we are able to offer is called leverage. So we take away the risk from you starting your business with us, right? Location. Well, great thing about you working with us, Dylan, is you don't have to worry about location. This is your office, and we're about to go into a new office here Hello. soon, right? So uh, we're fired up for that, as, as you see the people here live too, right? So location, you don't have to worry about that, Dylan. We got Wi-Fi for you, fax machine, printer, sales material. We got offices you can use. We got anything you need, this is for you. So location, you don't got to worry about that, right? Money, we already talked about that earlier. You can cover that with a one. 124, that was nothing, right? I mean, people spend thousands and hundreds of thousands to start a business and see zero profit for the first two years, right? We just had a girl that just got her license approved. She got a bonus of almost 600 bucks and made her first over the weekend. So she already made about $800 profit, you know, you know, after her IBA fee. That's crazy, right? First month profit already, profitable business already right okay uh licenses we're gonna walk you through the licenses right uh so that's gonna be a great thing for you what's left is the staff inventory and customers and in inventory itself with us obviously again we don't ha have any stakes so you don't have to worry about that again or even more right with us it's just uh people Names and numbers is what we call our inventory. So what we're gonna do is just like the grand opening with your restaurant, 
We're going to talk to some family and friends. And that's going to be your grand opening. And that's how you're going to get your potential staff and customers to your inventory, which is contacts, family and friends. You see how that works, right? So, uh, so I'm excited for you, Dylan, to go through our, our training program. I'm excited for your fast start. We're going to get you off to a fast start, get you to Sprint District and have a profitable business within your first 30 days with us. You part up for that as well? There you go. Let's do it, right? So, uh, hey, so that's Business 101 right there, right? Uh, so hopefully you guys got a lot from that. It's a very simple uh, an easy way to explain business to somebody, right? Um, I use this all the time. And what it does, it allows people to put Primerica in perspective that, hey, this is business. Because yeah. people get business, right? They, they, you know, well, they get it as much as they could as, from what they've heard, but people get business. But for some reason, they got Primerica over here. Like, what, what is Primerica? Like, you know, like, no, no Primerica is, is business. Yeah. America is an American business. So let's talk business for a second, right? So, uh, so hey, that's Business 101. Hope you guys got a lot from that. I got one more for you guys as far as recruiting goes, okay? Um, so, so this one, I kind of I uh, 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 got it from, uh, from Jeff Seagrave, not personally, right? Not, right? Uh, but through the orientation video, he talks about the real estate model. I just kind of added some stuff and I kind of maybe made it my own, right? Uh, so I call this one the Primerica model, okay? Uh, so let's go through it together, right? So this is a, a napkin presentation that you can use if you're recruiting somebody and they're a sharp guy, they're a sharp girl, they know business, they maybe kind of dabbled in some other businesses, they've dabbled maybe in multi-level marketing before, Maybe they've dabbled in real estate before. Maybe you're wanting to get their real estate license like the whole world today, right? So uh, wherever <laughs> they are, this is a great uh, napkin presentation to kind of get their mind going like, okay, Primerica sounds good, but how good is it really? Does that make sense, right? So let's kind of dive into this one here. So we're going to compare uh, Primerica, uh, uh, you know, a little bit to real estate, okay? So Dylan, let me kind of walk you through uh, this scenario as far as Primerica. Let me show you how Primerica works in our model, okay? So you heard of real estate, Dylan, before? I'm sure you know people that do it, right? So, so this will be simple, right? So in real estate, there are companies out there, let's say Remax, okay? They're pretty well known. And what, and what Remax wants to do is they want to expand and they want to have more offices or what do you call them? brokers, right? They want to have more locations because these locations, what they do is they focus on recruiting, hiring, and training what? Real estate agents. Yeah. Exactly. To go out there and sell homes. That's how it works. Let's keep it simple, right? The agent goes to the broker, gets hired, gets trained, gets licensed. They go out there and make sales. They sell homes, right? The agent sells a home. They make money, right? But they also makes money too. Broker. The broker does. So they both make money. That's the broker and agent relationship. Okay, so they both get paid. Is that fair? Yeah. Yeah, it is. He works for him, right? If it wasn't for him, he wouldn't make any money, right? So uh, he probably helped them through the whole licensing courses for real estate, right? Um, so now, let's say you're the agent. And you want to make more money, right? What do you have to do to make more money as an agent? Sell more houses. There you go. You got to sell more. What if you're the broker? What can you do if you're the broker if you want to make more money? Hire more, more agents. Makes sense, right? It's pretty simple, right? So just if you're a broker, you can, you can hire more agents and make more money and expand your business, you got to recruit and train more people. You got to grow your business, right? Now, here, this is where it gets interesting, all right? Mm -hmm. Do you think this broker wants this agent to become a broker? No. What do you think? No. Probably not, right? Because this broker has ABC real estate. And if he trains his agent to become a broker, 
Well, now this broker now has XYZ real estate, and now they become what? Competition. competition. And this guy doesn't want competition, so he's not talking about a broker or being a broker with this agent because he's going to train his competition. There's a reason why, and not knocking real estate, I'm just giving facts, right? There's a reason why real estate doesn't talk about brokers as much as real estates, uh, real estate agents, because that's all they want is real estate agents, not so much the broker opportunity, right? Because now they become competition, et cetera. I mean, there's how many, how many real estate brokers are there in Houston itself? There's a bunch of them out there, a bunch. They start with Keller Williams or Remax, and then they go on their own eventually. And now they're saturating the market, now they're competition. I think you kind of get it, right? Yeah. You know, so so that's kind of how that works. The real estate agent is self-employed. The broker could be more of a business owner capacity by being able to train people to work for him, right? So so that's real estate. Any questions there? Dylan, pretty good. So why do I explain that? Well, Primerica has very similar characteristics as far as how it works, but then we have a few more, right? So this is Primerica here. Okay, so Primerica is looking for regional vice presidents. Primerica is looking for brokers. We call them RVPs, okay? <clears throat> so just like Remax, we want to expand. We want to grow. We want location. We want offices, right? So Primerica is looking for brokers and RVPs to expand and open locations. What these brokers do, just like the, the broker in real estate, what they do is they hire, they train agents, they recruit, train, and license agents Correct to go out there and not sell homes. Obviously, we don't we don't sell homes, right? But they're gonna sell what insurance, investments, Vivian, they're gonna sell our financial services, right? Very similar uh, again to real estate in that example right there. Our agent makes money by selling our services. Every time they uh, offer a service, they get paid. But they also get paid. The broker does exactly just like the real estate example. So right there, they have pretty sim uh, very similar similarities, right? <clears throat> now the agent here, uh, didn't just like over here, if they want to make more money, what do they have to do? Well, in the in, in this scenario, they're an agent, right? So they got to sell more, right. offer more services, right? Okay, well this is where it gets good with oh. Primerica. So what Primerica has done is we have taken uh, uh, some qualities from what you call multi-level marketing. You got you heard of it before, right? Multi-level marketing does a lot of recruiting of and development of other people, right? So same thing with Primerica. So here as an agent, one of my agents, okay. So so I'm a broker, and let's say I have an agent. What am I? What my agents can do? They can go out there and recruit another agent to be on their team. And they help that agent get licensed and trained and licensed in the financial industry, professional licenses. We have background. So we're, we're very regulated what I'm talking about, right? And now that agent makes a sale and that agent, they're, they're fired up, they're part-time, they're making money. My agent's making money and we're making money too. So it's all win-win scenario. So my agent can make money by not just him helping his clients, but also helping other people make money as well. That's the great thing about Primera because you're not limited to just you always having to sell our services. You can ha uh, hire and train a team to go out and do the same for you, even as an agent capacity. Isn't that great, right? You know, that's amazing because you could be at home or at work. You have an agent out there working, making sales. They're getting paid, but you're also getting paid too. How great is that? That's called a passive income, yeah. right? That's amazing, right? So, well, here where it gets better again. Right. So here they didn't want brokers. So, but what about over here? Do you think this broker wants this agent to become a broker? Yeah. Maybe. And the answer is yes, they do. Because if this broker helps this agent become an RVP, what happens is now we're talking kind of like a the franchise model. That's another model that we have similarities to. Yeah. You heard of franchising, right? You know, let's say you franchise the wing stop. Well, now you got one location, right, Victor? Hey, there you go. 
It wouldn't be franchise a second location. So now you got two franchises, two locations making money from, correct? Yep. You open a third or fourth and you, you, you can keep going with your franchises, right? So what happens here, if you're a broker with Pinerica and you develop another broker, when I basically have a second franchise, a second location that you're gonna profit from. And that's again, from the uh, franchise model, right? Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Where you can have an office working and potentially have a second location and even a third location, giving people the same opportunity that you got to run your own business with Primerica. So that's the Primerica model. You see how that works? So we have taken a lot of great qualities from the real estate model, the multi-level marketing model, and then the franchise model. And we have this, what you can call it a hybrid model, which is the primary opportunity, right? So, uh, so are you excited as I am right now, Dylan, to get you going, right? Because I'm excited for you to go out there and, and you know build your team and get off to a fast start, right? But hey, do you have any questions right here so far? Pretty good? Let's go, right? So let's make something happen, right? So, hey, that's the Primerica model napkin presentation, guys. Hopefully you got a lot from that. Uh, again, this is gonna help you a ton whenever you're recruiting somebody and they're a sharp guy, they're a sharp girl and they know business. Now they need to understand Primerica business, right? So, uh, so hey, hopefully you guys got a lot from this morning. Uh, we have a lot of great things happening right now in nonstop November. Uh, we got, uh, you know, not just the, the Marco Island contest wrapping up, but we have the new contest, the Broadmoor Resort, starting this month already, right? So, uh, so if you're fired up to use these napkin presentations, uh, you know, go ahead and, and you know, you know, put these stuff to work this week. Put this stuff to work today, right? So that's the goal of these Wednesdays. Your first skill is to use what you learn and apply it in your business. But hey. The Brahma Resort is here, and the play that Glenn is calling this month to get ahead in the Brahma, I'm telling you, is personal. It's a personal game right now. If you do a one by one personal, you get what? 50,000 points. 50,000 points. Imagine somebody does 10 by 10 team and zero personal. Zero personal, but they have a 10 by 10 team. The guy, the person that's five by five personal will get about 250,000 points. The 10 by 10 T with no person, we're gonna get about 25,000 points. Wow. You see the difference? It's about 10 times more points. So the play this month is personally go out there and work your business for yourself, for your family. Go get paid this month. Go put some money in your savings. Go pay your bills this month, right? Get ready for a cash Christmas. Hope you guys have a great world-class Wednesday and make some money today. All right, guys, let's have a great Wednesday. Okay.